Why is it, why is it every guy's dream to be Rambo for a day, huh? But when that fantasy starts to turn into a nightmarish collection of frustrated Rambos playing war games in camps with Nazi names, I say, baby, if it sounds like a Nazi, looks like a Nazi, smells like a Nazi, the son of a bitch is probably a Nazi. Now, tonight, Tonight we meet members of Wolf's Lair, all right? And we find out if they're closet Nazis or victims of an hysterical smear campaign designed to put them out of business. They call it war games, baby. I'll tell you what. Let the games begin. Let the games begin. Let me, uh, let me introduce some of our guests at home base here for you. First, we've got Dan Chantos, who is the Marketing and Public Affairs Director of Wolf Slayer, right? Consultant. Dan, how you doing, pal? Good. How you doing? Bob uh, Chartok is captain of Headhunter's paintball team. And I'm going to start with Dan and ask him first to explain to us what paintball is and how it's played. Essentially, paintball is a strategy game that uh, helps the individual develop both judgment, decision, uh, tactical abilities, uh, self-confidence, self-respect. What happens on a field are 15 guys, normally against 15 guys. Uh, they encounter each other in a skirmish line using the air gun that you just used. Um, the goal, the objective is usually a, a capture the flag situation. And this shoots paintballs. Shoots a paintball. Which if you're close enough will damn well hurt you if it hits in the eye or something. Well, like sliding into second base will scrape your leg. That, that sort of hurt. Uh, you accept that as part of the game. The, uh, the damage is, is minimal. Uh, mostly it's just pride and ego that gets hurt. You eliminate somebody that way when, they, when that paintball, the gelatin capsule about the size of a marble, hits you someplace. Mm -hmm. It leaves a paint mark on you. You raise your hand and you leave the field and the skirmish continues. All right, now you guys have been accused of running a Nazi paramilitary war games camp, all right? I want the folks in the audience to see some tape, and as we see that tape, you tell us exactly what kind of a camp you run. Tape will be here. You've seen it before, pal. You can tell everyone what you do on the camp, just like you were explaining. Uh, run that tape for me, will you please? Don't need to look at my ugly puss. <laughs> okay, now you, you see them. They've just taken off. The game has just started. They're looking to get the best position. Here's a guy that's making an individual move to, to uh, you kind of you kind of go by shoot, move, and communicate. Okay. So they're firing at each other just like a war. Well, right. Okay. Just yeah, nothing wrong with that. Do you have any women play that game? Absolutely, about fifteen percent. Oh, yeah. 15%. About 50% of the people who play that game are women. Dan, your camp is called Wolf's Lair, right? That's named after Hitler's military headquarters in Prussia, then? I don't know. It was either Bavaria or Prussia. I well, Wolf's Lair was a name of uh -huh. his conference center. Now, that's just one of several references to Nazi Germany. Uh, are you in any way promoting a Nazi philosophy? No, we're not. What's going on up there is this. It's a me different marketing strategy whereby experienced paintball players who are tired of playing in the woods now have an opportunity to come up and play if you will the bad guys the bgs the personnel that work up there they have a they, they it, it's a team that that exists there for that one purpose only that's to challenge other teams from the eastern uh, so the reason you've given yourself the bad names then is to be the bad guys it, it stirs controversy uh at the same time it's a it's a it's do in you the own mind. that uh, area you play or do you lease it what is it? the owners do own that yes the owners own it yes people stay overnight uh, they can, yes. It's a three-hour drive from New York to, to New Milford, Pennsylvania. How many people can you put up there overnight? The intention is to put up uh, as many as 2,000 people. 
Wow. You have barracks and everything for that? Yes, they are. This uh, is like a, it's like a Boy Scout camp. How many barracks do you have? Oh, let's see, about 35. Oh, Sleeps about 21 there. apiece. How many uh, of those barracks are in use, usually? About four or five. Four or five. So you're really planning ahead then, huh? Well, the intention was to, to take right off and be a tournament place to handle 2,000 people. We received resistance from the planning, local planning commission because of the, uh, of the uh, perceived threat that it was going to be something uh, of the hate movement type. I got you. Let me go to Bob a second. Bob, you're a paintball expert, and uh, you've played at Wolf Slayer, am I correct? Yes, I have. What and do you think of Dan's approach to the game? Well, originally, the game was brought to my attention to be a Nazi flavor up there by Jerry Braun and its affiliates at NSG. I have found, going up there, they had a team called the Waffen Elite. I was not, and I voiced my opinion to the owners, that I think as a Jew, any type of connotation to Nazism is a disgrace. Well, what are the connotations that were there to Nazism? I personally had not seen any. Uh, I originally, it was reported that in the opening day ceremony, they all dressed up in black and everything. Mm -hmm. I have gone back several times since and have not seen the same flavor as originally attended. Oh, did the dressing up in black tell you something? Well, it was... Is that a connotation? Sure. Uh, of what? Of the SS to me. How about the connotation of a Jesuit priest? They dress in black, too. <laughs> yes, but they were also... They were also wearing armbands with lightning bolts on them. That I wouldn't see a Jesuit priest wearing. No, but you might see Benjamin Franklin wearing I didn't notice that in any of the pictures. I also was told that there was a Nazi similarity to your swasta, to the swastika in your... Uh, it's called a... See that? Where is that? Give me that item. Bring out the television here for a studio audience. The monitor, please. Let's see that at home. Show me the two pictures. Give me that. Give me that. Turn around so I can see it. All right, right there. Now, up close. Here, you get a look at that. What is that? It's called a Would wolf's you... angle. Wolf's angle? Over a thousand years ago, barbarians who only had axes used to mark the trees of their boundaries with that. Swipe, 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 and then one in the center. They chopped it. Stands for wolf. Wolf's lair. Will you buy that? I won't buy it. Okay. I won't buy it, but I'm not a maven in that area. Let me ask you a question. What's been the response to the German flavor in your camp? Be a lot of players who've had the same bad reaction as Bob has had? No. And I'll tell you why. Nobody's being indoctrinated. It's not white supremacy. It's not a hate movement. All it is is a marketing device. That's it. It's pure fiction. Now, the gentlemen who, who come up there and play, the ladies who come up there and play, find out one thing and one thing only. It is the single most elaborate field in North America indicating growth stage in this industry. Now, that might threaten people who are... Who are uh, Invested time and energy in smaller fields with less developed fields. All right. What well, we let have. Me, let me ask Bob. I have found the fields to be. Again, I went up there with a prejudice attitude. I came. I brought the attention to your producers of it. I found the, it to be totally different than I was told it to be. Ah. I found it to be one of the most elaborate and unique fields around. Now I was. Talking to someone in the green room earlier, and uh, he was swearing up and down that every weekend they're running Nazi training. I've been up there several weekends. So you don't feel that you've been up there several weekends and haven't seen it? I have not seen it. Is it possible you or other people are being overly sensitive, or do you think these guys are indeed, in any way, shape, or form, promoting a dangerous national philosophy? Nazi I think philosophy. in the beginning, as I stated, I was over sensitive to okay. it. Okay. All right. I, I think we've about worn this little mat out. Let's we'll meet a, a rival war games owner who Dan accuses of starting the smear campaign about Wolf Slayer and calling them a Nazi get together. Stay with us. going to go to some other guests we have at home base, new gentlemen who has joined us. Bob, before I go to them, 
You were kind enough to bring this story to us. Yeah. Six weeks you've been calling my producers and telling them that this guy was a no good, lousy, Nazi bastard. How come you turned chicken when you got up there and didn't say diddly squat? I didn't turn chicken. Yeah, well, then how come you are chicken? All right. <laughs> the guy to my producers you said you couldn't wait to get at this lousy Nazi bastard I was told certain things by people you call people lousy Nazi bastards because you're told certain things by people and be allowed to I read certain articles I went to check it out myself I was also how told how long ago did you go to check it out I went up with one of your producers up there that was the first time you checked it out I went there opening day I found one image then I found another image with the producer and then I went up a couple of times afterward, after I was warned not to go up again. Who were you warned by? I was warned by people in the industry. Name them. Uh, a couple of people that worked for Jerry Brown. Name them. Name them. I'm hearing a lot of loose lips. Why did you not go up there? What? Your producer asked me not to go up there again. Jerry Broad, staff, by a guy by the name of Ronnie asked me not to go up again. Did they tell you why? They Andy? said it was a put on. Andy, come here, let me see you. Let me introduce you to Andy Regal, my producer. I know who he is. Did you tell him not to go up there again? No, I did not. That's... This man's worked for me for three and a half years, never lied to me. And you look at him and say, that's bull... I say you're a chicken... You're gone, sir. You're gone. I told you I don't like you. You're a Fine. I said I don't like you. Get out before I rip you out myself. Let me go back to you, Dan, because I'm not sure all the shoes are clean on you either, all right? You stated that the accusation of Nazism at Wolf's Lair was created by the gentleman seated next to you. Not a gentleman. All right? To put you out of business. Now elaborate for me. About a year and a half ago, I started the consulting business in the paintball industry. Since that time, this gentleman's reputation has preceded him for a great many deeds regarding the closing of fields. Legal what deeds. What reputation what do you have to back it up? There's a couple of names that I could, in fact, if, if, if I may, this gentleman is in court right now, according to my information, with a, with a fellow field owner in Long Island. The intent, in my perception, is to put that gentleman out of business because he's a, com he's a competitor. Are you indeed Jerry spearheading this campaign to paint Wolf Flair as a Nazi retreat in an effort to run the competition to the ground? Not at all. Have you ever tried to put other paintball camps out of business? No, sir. In Make, sure, Long Island, Make, sure, let me, now, let me, Make yeah. sure you tell me the I'm truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. In Long Island, we helped start the operation and had an interest in the operation. Indeed, we're in the process of litigation now. The trial has ended and we are awaiting a verdict. We have alleged in a court of law that that interest was wrongfully deprived of us. But those people who know the history of paintball know that the fields that started in Long Island started under our aegis as well in which the reservations were taken for Long Island and our fields in Newburgh, New York. Under no other circumstances had we made any effort, attempt, effect to close any fields down. Have you made any effort or attempt to paint these guys as Nazis? Not to paint them. I'll tell you this, Mort, right. that if you wear feathers in a bill and you waddle and you quack, don't cry foul when you're called a duck. <laughs> now, Mort... You can trust this man's judgment. He will never call the owners. He will never call the owners of Wolf's Lair Nazis, not here or ever. Trust his judgment because he knows they're not. Let me, uh, let me bring to your attention, Mort, an article that appeared in the Philadelphia Inquirer. A place for grown-ups to play war with a Nazi flavor. And in it, George Funkhauser, the um, 
starter of Wolf's Lair has several quotes, and these are quotes from the paper. I have not to date heard him deny the accuracy of these quotes. Uh, Funkhauser, a Buck County gold and silver dealer, said his critics here can shove it. As for the Jewish residents who said they were worried, Funkhauser warned, I'll feed those fears more than they've ever dreamed. That's the Philadelphia Inquirer. Here, Morton. Who said this, Dan? Let me... Let me who right, said this, Dan? This, this, huh? Was this an accurate... No. 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 Was it accurate? Huh? Three people. There is a... Three na people. Seems to me I there's a Nazi. Nazi. Seems to me there's a Nazi by the name of Funkhausen or something. Yakov, Ronnie, Yakov, the, uh, does the name, the does the name yes, does. from the Jewish Defense Group, does the name Yakov Funkhausen, does that ring a bell? Let me start by saying, number one, the word wolf slayer gives it away. This man's a fraud. This man's a neo-Nazi. Yeah! One minute, one minute. Hold on. First, wolf slayer was the name of Hitler's house in Birch's Garden, which were the mountains of Bavaria, which was in Germany, number one. All right, number Yaakov, two, Yaakov, so what? George Funkenhauser is an alias for a man named Roy Frankhauser, who doesn't have the guts to say that, yes, I am a neo-Nazi party. Call him a neo-Nazi. That's then. right. And call you, and you don't him. have the guts to say it call either, friend. I want you to know something, pal. I'm call him. Tell you something. Call him out right now. I want now. you to tell you something. You can't do it, can you? Is, is he a neo-Nazi? He's a neo-Nazi. And these he said it. Came. Oh, one minute. By the way, this is document. Roy Frankhauser had ties to the American Nazi Party, has ties to Lyndon LaRouche. Okay, these weekend, so to speak, paramilitary camps are not the paintball games that win the Purdue. Have one minute. Law against that, pal. Excuse we would have been closed down Excuse by me. now. You'll have your chance no. when I finish. Yeah, all right, go ahead. You'll be subjective. These supposedly go ahead. weekend camp games. I'll patronize you. Okay. Mm -hmm. This flavor, Nazi flavor. These are neo Nazis who are out to make sure. It's gospel, that it? they are going to yeah, destroy gospel, the Jewish people and American people who don't believe in Nazi sick philosophy. Neither do I. Hold on a minute. You're a liar. Ne what? Wait a minute. And Whoa. 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 You're a liar. One minute. Whoa. One minute. Whoa. One minute. Whoa. One minute. Then, then there wouldn't be called Wander Wolf Slayer. There. No, no, no. Okay. Then it would not be called there. Wolf Slayer. Let me tell you something. What do I do? If you had a camp called Camp Klansman. You're going to tell me that it's not associated with the cold. One minute. No, one minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. The word wolf slayer gives it away. That's what the man was. That gives it away. They tried to away. assassinate that man there. Ooh, ooh, wait that a minute. By the New way, information. That was a coup d'etat. No, no, and they almost took over. One and they more almost thing. stopped the war one there. One more thing. You should so know. So maybe it's commemorating that. You should you know think about that, that what? You should know yeah. that these people are copycats. These people are copycats of an even more dangerous, dangerous organization called the Posse Comitatus, which is, which is in the Midwest, which has, These are has over 13 chapters this. in the Midwest, basically in Idaho, who have paramilitary this is, training with this is, real weapons. This is totally subjective. You know Yaakov, no let, subjective. let me ask Yaakov a question. I, 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 I saw in some literature that passed down to me, it said, right there. indeed, indeed, one of their fields is named Baston, after the city in France that the Germans defeated. This is another little uh, piece of dandruff on the, on the coat of these guys. Correct. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. Then would you also say and agree that it also could be very American? Because I could say in turn, one of the cities is called Baston, a city in France that was liberated by the Allies? Yes, yes. But not with the literature, the Achtung and the dressing in black as the SS dress and all the different types of Nazi symbols that we saw. But earlier in the show, he told us they were setting those people up as the bad guys for people to come in and beat those Nazis. Be Americans and beat us. What do you expect him to say? You expect him to openly say what she doesn't have the guts what to say? What do I expect you to say? No, no, Let no. Me no. Ask you a question. Let me ask Hold you a question. Minute. One minute. Do you admire Lyndon LaRouche? No. No, I do not. Have you ever met Lyndon LaRouche? No, I haven't. I've seen him Has on the Mr. TV. Mr. Frank Hausen, Hoffer, or Hoover, whatever the hell Frank his name Housen. is. It's not his name. It's not his name. That's What's his, his name? name. I, I'm sorry. What's his name? I promised him I What's would not his say his name. You said you would not say his name. That's it. We invited him. Wait a second. Wait a second. We invited him to be on this show. I know. He did not want to be on. 
after after that his crash, mother after that called, crash, his mother called and cried and begged that we don't reveal his name. Now, what's going on here? Coward. What's what going on? Here? What's going thing? on here? Say his uh, name. Let me, let me, let me, let me go to this gentleman. Forget the red cards. We're breaking nothing. I want to introduce this guy, Scotty. Go ahead. My name is Scott Wood. I'm captain of one of these paintball teams called Sergeant York's All-Americans. <laughs> the first thing I want to say is I am very impressed by you, Yaakov. I am impressed by a man that can reach into my mind and this man's mind and tell us what we are thinking. God can do that. How do you do it? I am impressed. I'm also impressed with your names which are front groups with what you can't really admit it's true. That's, that's also... No, no! No, no let me... Allow me. Listen. Allow me, Yaakov. How, how come your, your head man never did come down? How come he's not here? He is not my head man. I am a captain of a touring competition team. Let's okay. get the competition now, talking, going after these commercials, all right? Stand by. 